right? Um, moving some things around the garage, I ran across my old Geiger counter. So I thought I'd show that to you guys. Um, this is a uh, civil defense uh, version. Uh, not quite sure the dates. Uh, I think um, around 1960s, 1970s, something like that. Um, and this one is the, uh, let's see here, Let zoom in. This one is OCDM item number uh, CDV 700, model number 6A, uh, the Victorine Instrument Company, uh, Cleveland, Ohio. And it has, uh, a uh, Geiger tube on a on a leash here. Uh, it has a meter. It has uh, various settings uh, times 100, times 10, times 1. Um, and then it has an output uh, jack here. Uh, and that you would run to a headphones. Um, I didn't like having headphones so I glued a little uh, Pizio uh, buzzer on the top so uh, I can hear it directly. Uh, there's a hole drilled in the case and it goes down to the, uh, down to the uh, phone jack here. Um, so uh, before we turn it on, let's take it apart, right? That's not what you're supposed to do. All right, so take it apart, there's a, a latch on this side, a latch on this side, and you're in. That's all it takes. Uh, all right, and inside the uh, case here is a schematic. Very nice. Let's, uh, let's zoom in on that. Uh, so, uh, we have some batteries here. So we have, uh, looks like uh, three volts. There's uh, four D cells, uh, two in series, two in parallel. So we have three volts. Uh, looks like there's a switching power supply here, uh, which oscillates and uh, rectifies uh, into a high voltage. That high voltage gets put across the Geiger tube which is a GV3A and then uh, uh, no this is a Geiger tube up here I'm sorry this must be a voltage regulator a GV3A voltage regulator I'm not quite sure uh, what that does but it looks like it's a voltage regulator um, and then uh, runs up here to the Geiger tube which is a 6993 and then uh, the Geiger tube uh, fires and is uh, capacitively coupled to a circuit over here, uh, which uh, looks like it's an amplifier, and then goes out here to the meters and the, uh, and the headphones. So it's a very, very simple circuit. Um, not much going on here. All right, let's take a look at uh, Take a look at the guts here. Uh, like I said, it's uh, four four D cells uh, held in with these nice straps. Uh, this is plastic. Uh, it's going to be hard to kind of see things in here, but uh, there's some. Um, uh, coils, looks like custom wound coils. Uh, here's a meter. Let's look on the other side. There's a very, very large capacitor here, large in size. Uh, looks like there's some uh, variable resistors for calibration. Uh, here's that funny tube that I didn't know what it was. Um, and then the Geiger tube, of course, is in here. 
Uh, again, not much to the circuit. All right, let's uh, pop it in here. Close it up. All right, so the um, tube uh, fits in a little U-shaped hand. The Geiger tube is inside here. Uh, there's a um, shield around the tube, so you rotate it and it exposes the tube. It looks like there's some mylar tape wrapped around the tube. Uh, but it's pretty fragile, so that's why there's a shield around it. And the radiation would uh, then go in here. And then you'd uh, flip it around to protect it again so it wouldn't get damaged. Um, there is a uh, operational check source on the side. I don't know exactly what type of uh, radiation source that is, but let's see if it works. We'll turn it on here and hopefully you can hopefully you can hear this thing. I've got the washing machine going in the background here, but um, let's see here. Let me. Let me get the camera as close to this thing as I can, and uh, since the microphone is on the camera, uh, maybe you'll be able to be able to hear that. And I'll move this over to the other side, over here where the source is. Hopefully, you can hear that, and we can change the meter here. So we can uh, watch the meter, watch the meter come up with the radiation source. Uh, this is uh, millirads per hour. So uh, let's see, times ten. So we're about 1.4, 1.3 millirads per hour, something like that. Um, I actually used this thing, believe it or not, so I've got a good story. Um, the, during the Fukushima disaster, um, I pulled out my meter and I started measuring the background radiation in here in California and uh, they were advertising or advertising showing in the news of the plume uh, traveling over the Pacific headed towards California and I thought it'd be interesting to see if I could actually uh, measure the plume or not and um, uh, my daughter was interested so she was taking measurements uh, while I was at work and when I came home I would make measurements and so we were constantly uh, checking it, um, and uh, I remember getting home one day, and my daughter ran in saying, "I've detected the plume," and I was like, "What?" Because I really didn't expect it. Um, and I grabbed the meter and went outside, and sure enough, uh, the background level I think had tripled, if, if I remember right. Um, and so we were actually able to watch the plume go over us. It tripled. It tripled for about a day, maybe half a day, and then went over us. Um, so that was quite scary. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this radiation stuff is not good in the world. Um, but uh, I have a couple other sources here. Um, I used to have a very old Geiger counter that's now long gone, and uh, it had this source. Um, this source, it says, uh, is radioactive, contains radium, less than one microgram. And it's much hotter than this uh, cal source here. So let's, we can measure it. Uh, can, you, can, you, can you hear that? Yeah, it's quite hot. So we're at 100 here. This is measuring about
uh, let's see, 0.1110, about 17, about 17 millirads per hour, so um, a much hotter, much hotter cal source. This one says it reads 7 on the 20 scale. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but yeah, that one's that one's pretty hot. This one was from the uh, Radiation Detectron Instruments. Um, and then I have this source. I'll take it out of the bag. It might be an alpha emitter. I think it is. I believe this is a Amer Americanium 241. This is out of a smoke detector. Um, So it's not very active, um, but it might not be the best source for a Geiger counter. But it is radioactive. Uh, I had a friend go into a camping store once with a Geiger counter and go over to the Coleman Lantern section and said his uh, Geiger counter lit up quite heavily in the Coleman Lantern mantle section. They're radioactive as well. So. So I don't recommend you open up smoke detectors and don't recommend you play with radiation very much. Um, a, little, a little bit's okay, but be careful. Um, I've got one more thing to show here. Let me let me re rearrange the camera. Okay, I found the manual here. Um, I, I, I remember two stories I want to tell before uh, while we're still talking about Geiger counters. Uh, the first was um, when I was in high school, um, I was uh, a lab TA for the physics professor, physics teacher in high school. And uh, he had me cleaning out some ca cabinets and stuff. He was kind of taking over from an old um, teacher who had left. And so he wanted to just kind of clean things up and rearrange things. So I was going through things and... Um, I ran across a uh, uh, a lead ball. It was lead sheeting, and it was wrapped in a in a in a ball. And uh, on the outside of the ball was written CO60, <laughs> cobalt 60. So um, I don't know if there really was cobalt 60 in it or not, um, or it was something else in a student just for fun wrote cobalt 60 on it but it looked sketchy and so the teacher actually took it we had a, a nuclear power, power plant in town and he took it over to the nuclear power plant and said could you get rid of this for me um, yeah so that was a bit dodgy um, oh gosh and now I've uh, forgotten the other story um, what was the other story with the radiation Gosh, I don't know. Maybe it'll maybe it'll come to me. Um, so here's the book. Um, check source. See the probe. Circuit. Oh, I remember the other story. It was um, when I was in high school, I built a um, a cloud chamber, and I needed a radioactive source for my cloud chamber, and so I would go to the uh, spot the. Um, uh, Secondhand stores or the uh, pawn shops and stuff, and I, I bought a really nice old uh, alarm clock that had radium dials on it. They were painted really, really heavy with radium, and it worked great in my uh, in my cloud chamber. Um, those are fun to build. Uh, they're real easy to build, um, and uh, they're quite impressive. Uh, let's see here, theory, the Geiger tube. Um, says here the Geiger tube operates at 900 volts. Um, let's see, flyback type circuit, transformer winding system is turned on, flyback, blah, 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 blah. Uh, ah, so that voltage tube I didn't write, I, I guessed it was a voltage regulator tube. It's a corona discharge type regulator tube, which regulates the high voltage to about 900 volts. Um, so, yeah. Um, 
blah 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 blah. Um, stalling of batteries. Operating calibration. Uh, uh, since the background radiation is on the order of yada yada yada. It depends on where you are. If you're in uh, Denver, of course, radioactive background is much, much higher than here in California. This, we're one of the quietest places in the country right here. Um, checking the calibration. Battery. I haven't really seen where it, where it says what the uh, source is. It's probably a radium source. But battery live. And, oh, even a nice... Uh, Nice parts list here. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of uh, manufacturers who made this thing. Not just the Victorine company, but uh, a couple other companies made the same made the same device. Anyway. I thought you'd enjoy that, a little blast from the past. I remember when I was in, uh, oh gosh, how old was I? Junior high? Somewhere in junior high or high school, I was uh, went to the ham radio club and they used to have meetings in the civil defense shelter. Um, and uh, it was in a basement in the um, uh, central downtown building, the government building. And uh, so there was this basement, and there was an old radio down there, for civil defense uh, communication, ham radio, and the ham radio guys ran it. And uh, The most impressive thing, though, was uh, a, a map that was on the wall, and uh, this was up in Northern California. And so the map was Northern California from about San Francisco north up to the Oregon border. And uh, on this map uh, were... Uh, likely targets by the Russians, and uh, these likely targets were, oh, the uh, nuclear power plant where we were, um, uh, Shasta Dam uh, was a target, Alameda Air Station, you know, all the usual suspects, San Francisco, and there was these concentric circles around the uh, each target, and uh, uh, showing the blast zones from uh, one megaton bomb, you know, ten megaton bomb, something like that. I wish I had that map. Uh, it was quite scary, but you know, pretty cool. Uh, anyway, long time ago.